Hey guys, one reader question we seem to get all the time is whether Golden Goose sneakers are worth it. I actually wrote a post a few weeks ago about the 10 sneakers I would recommend instead of Golden Goose. There is a link to that post if you wanna go and see all 10. I would say there's three things that really draw people in. Number one, they have like this cool sort of like distressing. And so they have like, just like that, like casual nonchalant vibe that is sometimes hard to find. And so these guys do it the best. Number two, Golden Goose sneakers are made in Italy. So they are legitimately super well made. The leather is soft. I have found that my pairs don't need any breaking in period. And so they are a very high quality sneaker. And then lastly, the thing that makes Golden Goose sneakers so darn special is the fact that um, you can't really see looking at it this way, but they have a hidden wedge. It's not enough of a wedge to make it uncomfortable. In fact, these are sneakers you can truly like wear for hours and hours and hours and put some serious like walking miles in them. The hidden wedge just kind of like puts your foot into a really flattering position. If you're struggling to style sneakers with certain pairs of jeans, bare legs and dresses or shorts, that little tiny hint of an interior platform like completely solves that issue. These are some of the most flattering sneakers on and that is why they have developed such a crazy following. The biggest reason I don't love Golden Goose is because they are over $500. That is a really high price point, especially for sneakers. And that's kind of their starting. That's like their classic Golden Goose, like no bells and whistles, that's gonna run you over 500 bucks. The only other thing I don't love about Golden Goose these days is nine times out of 10 when I'm trying to find Golden Goose sneakers, there's like, there's glitter all over, there's faux fur, and like, it's just too much. Like it's, it's too much. However, there were six standout sneakers that I really liked that I wanted to kind of go over here and kind of talk about why I think they're better than Golden Goose and kind of show you how they, you know, look with jeans and dresses and all that kind of stuff. Let's start with a sneaker that, you know, if you, if the interior wedge of the Golden Goose sneaker really appeals to you, then I would like to introduce you to P448s. They make a ton of different sneakers, but the Thea style is the one you want. The Thea style has a platform that goes all the way around. So it gives you just like that extra inch of height. And I have a pair of Thea sneakers. They are just as flattering as Golden Goose with like shorts and bare legs and skirts and all that kind of good stuff. Quite frankly, I find them way more comfortable. Golden Goose are very comfortable, but these actually have a super thick, squishy sole and the tongue is super soft. You can see they're like, they're lined in terry. These are some of the most comfortable sneakers on the market. The downside, P448s are kind of going in that same trend as Golden Goose, where they're doing things like this. This was literally one of the cleanest, most minimal P448s I could find. You can find plenty of them with glitter and textured leopard print fabric. It's all fine, especially if you're, if you're sneaker style is something like a little bit more glitzy, um, you're gonna love these. If you're someone like me who likes it kind of like black and white and plain, you're gonna struggle a little bit. Next up, if the distressing of the Golden Goose appeals to you, then the next shoe I have, I'm actually really excited about. Oliver Cabell is, is your brand. These are also incredibly well made. They run about 200 bucks, just a little over 200 bucks but like, look at that cool distressing. I actually really like the sort of like masculine, um, minimalist logo where they differ from Golden Goose, however, though they don't have that internal wedge that I like so much. I actually chose the ones with this sort of like textured pattern on the side. I think it looks really cool. But they do have some that are, you know, plain white with just like a little hint of navy and they look very, very similar to Golden Goose. I personally think they need a tiny bit of a break-in period, but it's not bad. It's not bad. This is like a really, really solid option. Next up, if Golden Goose sneakers are calling your name because you just, you love some luxury items, I would recommend instead of Golden Goose, these are so exciting, Off-White. The sneakers are seriously cool and they are also seriously comfortable. This is a basic Off-White sneaker. Um, this is the logo. They're canvas though. They're not fully leather. Off-White does make a pair of fully leather sneakers and they have a much larger sort of profile. They look like a dad sneak. They're seriously cool. 
they're 500 bucks. Personally, I prefer the, the lower profile canvas sneaker. It makes it super lightweight. These are gonna be my sneakers for summer. Everyone always wants to know like what to do with this weird tag thing. I had looked into it a little bit and you know, people are split online, some people are keeping it there. I personally am gonna just take mine off. I think these are a seriously cool sneaker. I don't need the like extra tag detail. I think these are great. The other ones that I was looking at are these which have the uh, sort of like that Elvis blue suede shoe vibe, which I'm totally into. These are also, these are a canvas and suede combination, but like I said, I think I'm gonna go with the canvas instead. Next up, I don't have the box because I've been wearing them. These little white sneaks from Frida Salvador are my new favorite purchase. I love the sort of like sexy cutouts. It makes them look amazing with dresses. So good with, you know, anything that shows a little bit of leg, shorts and like prop jeans and all that kind of stuff. They have like a very obviously classic vibe. They do, they're just like a teensy, teensy, teensy bit big on me. And so they kind of like, you know, as I'm walking, they come off. But other than that, they are extremely comfortable and I think with just like a little foot pedal, it's gonna be great. And these will run you about, I think they're about 300 bucks as well. So none of these are budget friendly yet. Let's get into some of the budget friendly options. The Karyumas. If you haven't heard of the sneaker brand, they are very exciting because they are one of the most sustainable sneaker brands on the market. And I am in love with this style of sneak. It definitely has some Golden Goose vibes. It's like the classic leather sneak. And these guys, if you can see inside, they're sort of like a cork footbed. And so it's comfy, it's like moisture wicking. These are a really great shoe. The fit on is very much like an old school, classic white sneak. Under 100, they retail for 98 bucks. So yeah, a good shoe. Lastly, what did I forget? I should have ordered a new pair so you guys didn't have to look at my like disgustingly worn <laughs> Adidas. These guys have been with me for years and years and years, so much so that I've had to upgrade a few times because I've literally worn them out. They are just like the easiest sneaker I own. They go with dresses, they go with skirts, they go with shorts, they go with jeans, they literally go with everything. And one thing that I've started doing from time to time is stalking the Adidas website because that's how you get like superstars, they'll do limited edition ones with like cool little detail. And I end up getting like a ton of compliments because people are like, oh, where did you get that particular pair? They're definitely under a hundred. They are definitely a good buy and they're just so easy. So yeah, that's it. If you guys are being tempted by the Golden Goose, I would encourage you to try a few of these other options. As always, links are below to everything I've talked about here. And yeah, I'd love if you would like and subscribe to this video. Thanks for watching.